In my attempts to become the king and president of the Magic Virgins, today I present you a video of the top five worst magicians. Hui, 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 hui. Now, before you get your panties in a knot, these aren't my opinions. This is from ChatGPT. So I asked ChatGPT, hey, give me a list of the top five worst magicians. So I'm just the messenger, baby. I know a magician is gonna skip this intro and then get to the list of me ranting and raving about these magicians, which for the most part are great, and post some long-winded response on Facebook going, look at this guy saying that David Blaine is one of the worst magicians, and you're one of the worst viewers of online content because you skipped the intro with all the context. So these are all through ChatGPT, don't bitch at me. Speaking of which, David Blaine is the first one. Now, according to this, it says David Blaine gained fame for his endurance-based stunts, such as being buried alive and living in a glass box. While these feats garnered attention, critics argued that the the prolonged nature of these stunts didn't necessarily showcase traditional magic skills. And it went so far as detracting from the artistry of magic itself. Now, David Blaine has faced a lot of controversy throughout the years for these stunts. However, you do them, ChatGPT. You stay enclosed in a block of ice in New York for 72 hours. Screw the ice, just stay in New York for 72 hours. I do remember the whole controversy in the UK when he was hanging in that box and people were throwing food, which is not saying much in England because your food sucks. But this is a criticism that I have heard of David Blaine throughout the years. And shut up. This man innovated a new style of magic and dare I say, saved the art form in the early 2000s. But the stunts are a little bit nuts. I heard that he wants to be in a bottle thrown in the ocean. He's not going to make it back from that one. The next one here, according to ChatGPT, is Darren Brown's controversies. It says Darren Brown is known for his mind-bending illusions and psychological tricks. However, some critics have accused him of exploiting psychological vulnerabilities and manipulating participants' emotions for entertainment, raising ethical concerns about the boundaries of ethical magic performance. Now, Darren Brown traditionally has gone in hot water with the most virgin of mentalists, and that's mostly in part because he presents his mentalism, which has methodology and mechanical methods founded in traditional mentalism. He presents himself as this psychological manipulator where he's able to get this information from a participant and play it off as if it's real. In his many television appearances, he's bordering on this fringe of reality where he's telling you essentially that he's picking up this information through physiological means. However, it's not, it's mentalism, it's magic tricks. So that rubbed people the wrong way, but it's called kayfabe, buddy. I remember The Undertaker walking around in public as if he was the dead man. You gotta keep to the character. Now, Darren Brown does have those nefarious television specials where he pretends that there's a zombie invasion. There's another one where he has a man navigate a plane to a safe landing, even though the whole thing was orchestrated. So there is some controversy there in terms of how the stunts were presented, but I think it's still good entertainment and the man has innovated in the world of mentalism more so than anyone else in the past 50 years. Chris Angel is next on the list. It says Chris Angel's fusion of magic and rock star like theatrics has drawn both praise and criticism. While his style has attracted a dedicated fan base, some magicians feel that his emphasis on spectacle overshadows the essence of magic and dilutes the craft's traditional principles. That's a little retarded. If you are gonna rant about something that Chris Angel does, I suggest his ring in mouth trick, where he makes a ring vanish, and in the process of making out with a chick, the ring appears in her mouth. You could figure out how this is done, but it's gross. And I'm mostly just saying that because I can't do that. I'm too short. I'd have to get on a stepladder to make out with most girls. Hoo-ya, 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 hoo-ya. A good valid criticism of Chris Angel is Mind Freak, and that's not mentioned anywhere here in this paragraph. Mind Freak had some good bits, but for the most part, it was atrocious. Seeing Chris Angel handle a deck of cards is like seeing Ricky Berwick trying to walk. You gotta have more virginity, man. Have some dedication to the art, but I know he's been killing it with his recent show, so it's not all too bad. The next one here is Lance Burton. Lance Burton, which lets me know that ChatGPT is officially full retard. It says, although Burton achieved considerable success as a magician, his style was often criticized for being somewhat outdated and lacking innovation. His traditional approach and reliance on classic tricks sometimes left audiences longing for a fresher take on the art of magic. That's retarded, and I'll tell you why. Because Lance Burton is doing an homage to that sort of classic style of magic. And he was the first one to do it in a way that was presentable to modern audiences. And then eventually people caught on and started copying and it became cringe. But this man's dove act is a work of art. So this is a little bit dumb on ChatGPT's part, but I could see why maybe it would mention that the fact that he's wearing a frilly jacket 
would be something that audiences wouldn't necessarily want to see. But I feel like Lance Byrne is just laughing at you while he's counting his money. Speaking of counting money, check out the Pig Cake Magic Academy. The link is in the description section below. You could go from a beginner magician all the way to expert level with the tutorials that I have posted there. Over 1400 magic tutorials on the Pig Cake Magic Academy to date. And I'm always constantly updating and uploading new videos to the Academy. And if you want to check out some of my work, you should look at my brand new set of lecture notes that I just released last week. They're notes for a lecture that doesn't exist. I haven't actually done this lecture, which is the fun part because it contains a bunch of moves, ideas, routines, tricks, essays, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I've enjoyed accumulating over my many years of virginity. I'm actively working on another book, if you want to call it that, an ebook. This one's called The View From Down Here, and so far it's shaping up to be pretty good. So that should be released next month. Look out for that. However, for now, you could check out the lecture notes and get a little bit of a taste of my writing. James Randi is the next one. It says James Randi, who was known as the Amazing Randi, was a renowned magician and skeptic who dedicated his career to exposing fraudulent mediums and psychics. While his efforts were noble, his relentless skepticism sometimes led to public clashes with magicians and paranormal enthusiasts, resulting in mixed opinions about his approach. Now, the truth of the matter is that James Randi wasn't necessarily the best magician, kind of hacky if you ask me, but he was still pretty sound in his techniques and methods. And his whole bit was exposing people that were claiming to be psychics or fraudsters or taking advantage of people using magic means, which I think was very noble in and of itself. And of course, he continued this until the day he died. So I don't think that that's valid criticism. If you are going to criticize James Randi, I think the only thing is the weird video of him asking for a blowjob. You do a blowjob on me? Right? If I drive you around in the car, will you do a blowjob on me? Around where? Well, find a place to drive. Right. Now, ordinarily, this would not be a problem, but the age of the participant was relatively questionable. You can look that up yourself, but it is an interesting thing. But that is ChatGPT's list of the worst magicians. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Make sure to leave your take in the comment section below. It tricks YouTube into thinking that my channel is actually worthwhile. Also follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to become Twitter famous and trying to rake in some of those sweet, sweet Elon Musk bucks. Uh, some advice at the end of the video, I guess. Uh, this right here is my laptop. I've had this for about seven years now. It's not what I edit with anymore. I edit on an Intel because <laughs> editing here would take probably way too long. But uh, this case right here is actually something that I made. I cut a piece of Lego and uh, I turned it into a case for the Surface Pro 4. Uh, these pieces actually came from a theft. My ex-girlfriend stole these from a store in Las Vegas. I didn't condone it, but I'm just letting you know where it came from. And uh, people ask me where it is that I got this case. I made it. DIY is very underrated. You need to get into things. I fixed my motorcycle, right? I could have taken it to the shop and gone that route, but instead I decided to go, no, no, I'm gonna fix this on my own. I'm gonna figure out how to work my carburetor, replace my gas pump, and then do it on my own because now I have a very valuable skill. Same thing with this. I learned how to shave the edges and conform it to the actual Surface Pro itself. You gotta get in there. When I see you again, 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 Shall we go? Shall we go? Shall we go?